and show how that can be used to handle non-blocking sockets. So NIO means new IO and is a Java API in, in part replacing, in part completing the uh, older Java IO stream-based API. The uh, Java NIO API stays in packages starting with java.nio and it was introduced in JDK 1.4 and improved in JDK 1.7 but the parts that we're, will be covered in this course are the same in well more or less the same in 1.4 and 1.7 so Java NIO provides a completely new IO model based on channels which uh, connects to a source or a drain for data buffers which contain data and selectors that are used to select which channel can uh, perform IO without blocking. It improves performance uh, not only on the server side but it, maybe in particular on the server side. It improves performance because, because it supports non-blocking IO and also because uh, native operating system calls can be used. So main features of the NIO APIs are uh, buffers which are data containers. There are buffers for different uh, data types like byte, char, int. Another feature is a channel which uh, uh, is a connection uh, that passes data. Then there are selectors which um, enables non-blocking IO. And then there are uh, character set encoders and decoders for translating between characters and uh, byte-based data. There is a pattern matching facility uh, using regular expressions and there is an improved file interface that supports locking files and memory mapped files. But uh, the only features used in this course are buffers, channels, selectors and a brief look at some parts of the new file APIs. So uh, main abstractions, uh, buffers uh, are the containers for data. All data transfer is done using buffers. All, all, there's no, there are no individual bytes as in the stream-based API, but only, only buffers are used. There are lots of, of methods to uh, operate on, on the buffers and uh, there are some pointers associated with each buffer. At first it can be difficult to understand the meaning of those pointers and how the methods are used to manipulate them. Um, another abstraction is channels. So a channel represents a connection to some uh, source or drain to which data can be passed or from which data can be read, like for example a file or a socket. Selectors and the selection keys are used uh, to select uh, which uh, channel can perform non-blocking IO at a particular time. So we can query a selector for which channels are ready to perform IO immediately without blocking. So the packages, uh, we will only use the uh, NIO and NIO channels packages in this course. So now let's have a closer look at the buffers. So a buffer is a container for data and the buffers are used for all data in the NIO API. There is no byte based data. So uh, let's say that this thing down here is a buffer. So a buffer is used to uh, contain data and this buffer has the four uh, elements of data, the gray ones. So a buffer has a capacity that is one of its properties and the capacity specifies how many elements can be stored in the buffer. It is set when the buffer is created and cannot be changed. So this example buffer can contain eight elements. Then there is the limit. The limit is the index of the first element that is irrelevant, that should not be used in the particular situation. Let's say that in, in this example buffer we have written uh, four uh, elements to the buffer, the, the four gray ones. So then the, uh, the limit points to the index four because there is nothing at in the index four. We have not placed anything there. The position is the index that should be used the next time. So let's say that we want to read and, and we have not read anything yet. Then we should read from position zero here. After that position should be advanced to index 1 because next time we want to read from index 1. Then there is also the mark. So the mark is like a bookmark. We can place bookmark on a particular position. Let's say that we have read up to position number 1 and we mark position number 1, set the bookmark. Later we continue reading and position advances and then we can 
return the position to the marked index number one in this case. Okay, so now let's look at some buffer methods. So first uh, method allocate direct allocates a direct buffer. So a direct buffer means that the JVM tries to uh, perform uh, operating system uh, operations directly on the buffer. I, uh, JVM tries to avoid copying the buffer. No intermediate buffering, no copying to internal JVM buffers. Uh, allocate means to allocate a buffer that is not direct, a plain JVM buffer, and not use uh, the I/O operations directly on that buffer, but copy it into the JVM. So why on earth should we want the buffer that is not direct when the al when the direct buffer is faster? Well, that is because it takes more time to create a direct buffer than it takes to create a non-direct buffer. So whether we want a direct buffer or not depends on how much it is used compared to how often it is created. Okay, next method, clear, which means to empty the buffer. So say that we have written data into the buffer, we have read all that data, and then we want to write again. Then we want to overwrite the data that was previously written. So clear is t like to empty the buffer. So uh, limit is set to capacity. Um, when we are writing, we can use all positions in the buffer. Uh, and position is set to zero, we start to uh, write at position zero. Flip means to prepare the buffer for reading after we have written. Let's write the buffer. So let's say that first position points to index zero, then we write at index zero and position will advance to index one. We write something also there and position advances to index two. Then it's, it's time to flip, because now we want to start reading. Okay, so position was now at 2, which means we set limit to 2. Limit is set to position. And position is set to 0. So now we are ready to start reading. And we will first read at position 0, advance to position 1, then read at position 1, but not advance to position 2, because lim limit is at position 2. So this is the way to guarantee that we do not read anything that was not written. Rewind, just reset the position to index zero, which means to again read. Limit stays where it was, so we can start reading from scratch from index zero again. Uh, mark is to place a bookmark, mark the position, and later on we can return a position to the mark. Yeah, and that is uh, reset. These methods, clear, flip, rewind, mark, reset, there are some more. Uh, handles the buffer's properties, the mark, position, limit, and capacity, and can be a bit confusing at first. So, so one has often to uh, return to the API documentation. Okay, wrap is a way to create a buffer. It means an existing array is wrapped in a buffer. We create a buffer which uses an existing array as its storage. Then there are also the different get and put operations. Uh, e either to um, read at an absolute position, we can specify read, get or put from index, whatever, or we use the current position uh, as the index for reading and writing for get and put. Then there's the method has remaining, which tells if, if more uh, elements can be read or written, if there is space remaining, free space between position and limit. So now let's have a brief look at some code uh, reading and writing from and to a buffer. One way to do this to uh, fill the buffer is to use wrap uh, and we just uh, wrap the backing um, array s in this case which is the string here in, in the buffer. Or we can allocate an empty buffer of the same length as the string s and then fill it down here by writing no indexes specified the i refers to the uh, index that is read from the string. So no index is specified for the put, uh, which means it just starts putting at index 0 and then 1 and, and so on, and eventually should end at index 11, because there are 10 characters in this string and the, the position is at, at the next character. Here's how to read from the buffer. So remember, uh, after we've written, before we read, we must flip, sets limit to position, avoid, that way we avoid uh, reading th something that was not written, and position is zero, so we start reading from the first element. Uh, 
then just call get and there is no index here either so start reading at position 0 and, and then position 1 and so on. So now let's look at channel. So a channel is a connection to an uh, IO source or drain su such as uh, for example a socket or a file and um, channels transfer data from a source to a buffer or from a buffer to a source and uh, only blocks of data, buffers are, are, are transferred, no byte-based data. So a channel can be either blocking or non-blocking. Um, for TCP connections there are the channels socket channel which connects to a communicating socket and server so socket channel which connects to a listening socket. Then there is also a UDP channel called datagram channel and a file channel called file channel. So let's have a look at file channel first and then we will focus mainly on socket channels. Um, so a file channel uh, can be used to transfer data to or from a file. And the file channel can map content to a buffer in main memory. And a mapped buffer means that a segment of the memory is um, byte by byte mirroring the content of a file, which makes it faster to access the file. Um, in fact, uh, the memory that is mapped to the file is often the kernel's uh, file cache. On the other hand, the uh, memory space is wasted, might be wasted w if we map smaller files because uh, large chunks, normally uh, page sizes, are uh, allocated uh, of memory when mapping to a file. So some important methods of uh, the file channel. So the read and write methods, of course, that are used to read or write to a specified position in the file. Map, that is used to create a memory mapped file. Force empties the underlying buffers, forces the output to the file. Uh, the methods transfer to and transfer from are very interesting. Uh, they can be used to transfer data from one file channel to another file channel and uh, are very fast. Uh, usually the transfer is done in the operating system's file system cache. So a uh, file channel example. First we uh, create file input stream to the file. File name is here. And then retrieve the channel of uh, that file by calling get channel on the input stream. Okay, now we have the channel, so we map it uh, to a buffer in memory. It's a read-only uh, file, we will only use it for reading, and the entire file is mapped starting at index 0 and the, uh, ending at the, the size of the file. Uh, then we wrap system out in a channel. Um, so channels is a convenience class that has methods for operating on channels. This one creates a new channel that wraps this stream. And then as long as uh, data remains in the buffer, there is something between the position and the limit of the buffer, we write, continue writing to, to uh, the out stream, out channel I mean. This th thing here is the out here. And the buffer here is the buffer there. So we write the buffer to the channel. Okay, now let's look at socket channels. A socket channel uh, connects to a TCP socket. It's used to read and write uh, to uh, a TCP socket. And each socket channel is associated with one particular socket object. can be done like this. So for here we first uh, create the socket channel. Uh, and then we configure the channel to be uh, non-blocking here and then we connect to the uh, address specified here. So it is on this line that the connection request is sent to the specified address. Th this is a, a simple HTTP client that will um, send an HTTP GET uh, request and uh, print what is returned by the uh, web server at that address. So the GET request uh, looks like this. It will uh, issue an HTTP GET for the root, which should perhaps be the index file at the root. Okay, so here we uh, retrieve the host name to query the host uh, that shall be queried. Uh, if nothing is specified on the command line, it's uh, www.kthse. 
Uh, then we create the host header. Note that according to a HTTP protocol, the host header must be included in the request, otherwise the server will probably not answer. The port number, unless otherwise specified on the uh, command line, is 80. Uh, okay, and then the answer from the server is going to be written to system out. So as on the previous slide, create wrap system out uh, in a channel. Here we create the um, uh, socket channel and send the connection request to this particular address. So this is the line where the connection request is sent. We uh, create a byte buffer containing the get request specified here. We wrap that one in the buffer here uh, and then we write the buffer. This is the buffer. Write it to the socket channel created here. And then do the same with the header. So the host header created here is sent on these two lines. Okay, and then allocate a new buffer uh, that can be that will be used to uh, retrieve the result. Then we read on this line. So as uh, long as there is space in the buffer, remaining space in the buffer, and as long as the channel has not reached the end of the stream. So if the channel reaches the end of the stream, it, the read operation will return minus one. So if either the buffer is full or, or the stream is closed, uh, we stop reading. But up to then we read and each read will read as much data as, ca as is available. But note that it's blocking. We have not set the channel to be non-blocking. So the read operation will block and when there is data that can be read, all, all data that uh, is available up to the size of the buffer will be read. Okay, then we must flip the buffer which means prepare it for uh, uh, reading. Then we read from the buffer and write to the out channel on this line. Out was specified up here. And then we clear. So clear means to empty the buffer. So flip uh, is after we have uh, written to the buffer and want to read. And clear is after we have read and want to start over writing again. So now let's have a look at the server socket channel. So server socket channel is for server sockets, that is TCP listening sockets. So uh, there is one server socket object associated with each server socket channel. And here's an example of uh, uh, showing how to use the server socket channel. So we open the channel, uh, we retrieve the socket, the underlying socket of this channel, and we bind that socket to a particular port number on the uh, network interface on the local uh, machine. To bind the server socket can uh, receive connection requests that will be queued until uh, accept is called. Then let's have a look at selectors. So the selector is the object that is used for non-blocking uh, sockets to select a socket channel that is ready co to communicate. So we create uh, socket channels, uh, configure them to be non-blocking and then query the selector if there is any socket channel that is ready for operation without blocking. So first associate the selector with all the non-blocking channels from that we want to work with and then query the selector if any of the channels is ready for communication. The selector will then tell us if there are channels that are ready to accept, read, write connect or whatever and then we can handle those channels without risk risking the operation to be blocking. So there are several channels that um, can be used with selectors be non-blocking but uh, we will only look at uh, the server socket channel and the socket channel. So the channel must be registered with the selector uh, and when registering the channel with the selector we specify which operation we are in, interested in. Each registration is represented by a selection key. So the key represents an association between a selector and the particular channel and the particular operation that, that the selector is that we're interested in doing on this channel. The selector maintains three key sets. Uh, the first is a set with uh, all registered channels. The section se second is a set with all the selected 
uh, all the channels that have selected keys that are th that which means keys that can perform at least one operation without blocking and cancel key sets key set which contains keys that have been scheduled for deregistering but are not yet deregistered so to use the selector uh, uh, we create it by calling selector.open uh, and then configure the channel to be non-blocking by calling configure blocking and passing false and then register the channel with the selector in this case we have um, created a channel server socket channel here uh, where the socket has been bound the server socket is bound to a particular port here which means it is ex listening for for incoming connection requests uh, and now it's time to call accept but we do not call accept immediately uh, but instead uh, which because that would block inst but instead we configure the channel to be non-blocking and then we register a selector with the channel to register the selector with the channel we call the register method on the channel specify the selector and the operation we are interested in, in we are interested in accept operation so now we have a registered uh, uh, a selector with this particular channel we register the selector with all channels that we are interested in so there should be only one selector for all channels so then we can call select uh, which uh, returns as soon as one of the channels is ready for IO so the select method on the selector is blocking but it will return immediately when one of the, all the channels that have been registered with this selector can perform one of the desired operations um, there's also the select now method which is non-blocking select it, it returns immediately selected keys returns keys representing channels that are ready for non-blocking IO so first call select then we know when that returns we know that one at least one channel is ready for non-blocking IO and then we call selected keys to retrieve the set of keys representing those channels that are ready for non-blocking IO and then we iterate over that selected key set and han handle all those channels that are now ready for non-blocking IO the last abstraction to understand is a selection key so a selection key represents the associ association of a particular selector with a particular channel so when the um, uh, selector is registered we call register on a particular channel specify a selector to register and which operation we are interested in we would like to read from this channel uh, then the register um, method returns a key a selection key uh, we can attach a particular object with uh, the uh, selector uh, sorry with the key uh, for example a buffer used to read and write data mm, to from this channel so here we uh, allocate the buffer and here we attach it to the key and later when we um, want to handle this channel retrieve the channel from the key retrieve the channel and we retrieve the attachment from the key like this last now that we have covered all abstractions of the uh, Java Naiwa API let's have a look at an example so this example is a non-blocking echo server uh, it, it will use non-blocking communication it will receive a message and echo back the same message so before this code here there should be code like this which means before the code in the example the server channel has been opened uh, the socket has been bound to a particular address the server socket has been configured non-blocking and uh, we have registered a selector with the um, uh, serv server channel so the uh, uh, selector is waiting for the uh, accept operation on the server socket channel and of course bef before registering the selector the selector has also been open as in this line here okay so the server socket is open it is waiting for connections and uh, the selector is waiting for accept uh, for the server socket to be ready to accept without blocking then this here is the run loop of, of the this thread so remember that with non-blocking uh, io 
uh, we're not blocking socket communication we have only one single thread handling the server socket and all communicating sockets uh, first the uh, sel selector handling is not thread safe so that it would be a nightmare trying to synchronize and lock between different threads and also and mainly there is no point in using multiple threads uh, since uh, time-consuming tasks will de be delegated to other threads and no threads will be stuck blocking it, we are perfectly fine with only one thread handling all communication that way we also avoid context switching between different threads okay so this is the run loop of the thread handling the communication first call select so select is blocking operation it will not return until one at least one of, of the operations we are interested in can be performed without blocking okay when select returns and we get to this line we know that one at least one operation can be performed immediately so then re we retrieve the set of keys representing the channels that can perform an operation immediately and we get an iterator over those um, keys so this is the iterator so then we iterate while there are more keys in in this set we continue to iterating by calling has next uh, then we retrieve the next key we remove the key from the set otherwise it will remain there and will be handled again but once we've handled it it should be removed and we should not handle it again okay so when we get below uh, this line we are ready to handle the actual uh, key that was ready so okay there are three uh, pos uh, possibilities well for a start when there is only the server socket there is in fact only one possibility uh, and that is that it is acceptable which means the accept operation can be called immediately on the server socket channel uh, so then we retrieve the server socket channel by calling the channel method on the key and then we have the server socket channel in server here and we call accept which is the accept call where the connection is established and just like accept on the server socket returns a communicating socket accept on the server socket channel returns a socket channel which is here this one so then we set also that channel to be non-blocking all channels all communication should be non-blocking uh, we register this channel the new uh, newly created channel so this channel here was that channel and we regis register it with the only selector we are using and the operation we are now interested in is reading we would like to read from this newly created socket we are waiting for a message that shall be echoed back so um, then we also associate a buffer with this uh, key uh, and this buffer will be used to contain the, the method uh, the message that shall be echoed back and then we're done okay so that that means so now we have accepted a new connection uh, and uh, okay the uh, if this was the first time this was then this was the only key uh, let's assume this was the only key so we go back again uh, take a new turn in the loop and next time maybe uh, the there is a read operation that can be done which means a message was sent to uh, the socket uh, a socket that was uh, created here and uh, registered with the selector here okay so uh, then we can read and then we retrieve the channel of the socket from which we can read we get the buffer that was attached so it's the buffer that was created here that is the buffer returned here it's uh, it's uh, attached to the um, select selection key here and retrieved here and then we read from the channel to the buffer here okay so now the buffer is filled with the message that shall be echoed back and then we are interested in writing we are no longer interested in reading we shall not read another message from this channel before we have echoed back the previous message okay so then sooner <coughs> sooner or later uh, it is possible to write to this uh, socket represented by this channel and then we get here we again retrieve uh, the channel the buffer the channel there and the buffer that was attached to this selection key and remember this is the buffer that was 
filled with the message when reading. So before writing we must flip, then we can write, write to the channel from the buffer. If there is remaining data in the buffer, it means not all data was sent. Uh, we did not manage to send all data. Then we compact the buffer, which means that the remaining parts of the buffer. So say that we ha have a buffer. We had some data. But we only managed to send uh, this and this. Okay, so then co what compact will do is that it will move this one there and this one there. So next time we are we get here and try to send again, we will again start sending from the beginning of the buffer. We do not have to remember that last we reached this point and now we should start sending from here. Okay, or but if there is no remaining data in the buffer, then it means all data was sent and then we can clear the buffer, which means to uh, reset all the pointers and so it will start next time when we start writing, it will start writing from index zero again. And now we are interested in reading. We have echoed this message back and we shall not, do not want to interest the, to echo it back again. So now we want to read a new, new message that can be echoed back. So that's it. This only thread performing IO will continuously loop here. And whenever it, uh, something can be performed, the select method will return and then it will iterate over all channels that can uh, on which non-blocking IO can be performed and there are three alternatives uh, it might be that a new connection can be established or it might be that a message can be received from a socket or it might be that a message can be echoed back